Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Maybe we just rush to the critical meet, yeah. uh, Archbishop. You became a very critical voice, even in retirement, against the previous government. Uh, uh, you were such a, um, you lent your voice to the re-election of president, to the election of president Hakainde Ichilema. And uh, to, I think, to the, the political fortunes of the PF Patriotic Front were actually taken away, mostly even by your voice. President Akainde Ichilema is in government. Again, you are one of the critical voices that have risen. What has gone wrong? Why would a man, for example, that you had campaigned for in that manner, again renege on the issues that you had raised? Yeah, this is a, a question which should be answered by the people of Zambia, because you are pro proving us mm. why at this particular time you are not picking up that kind of torch which was started in order to bring us what we have today. Yeah. Why are people so scared? Again, if we have study groups that are made up by people like my, my dad and angel there, we are Zambians. Why are these things happening? You think we don't, we, we don't have enough intelligence to say this is wrong and we are going to say to the government we are not going to accept this. Mm. We can. We can. We are not saying people go into celebrations and especially we don't want uh, violence. We want things to be done with good intelligence. We are doing this because this is the right thing. Mm. But people are scared. You are are we back to a dictatorship? Oh. Even worse than a dictatorship. <laughs> that is my opinion. Mm. And I should put the adjective humble opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Your humble opinion is usually a big thing. So we are in a dictatorship, worse than a dictatorship. Why do you say so, Your Grace? Because dictatorship is uh, you have maybe a group of people or two, three people who are holding the whole country in their hands. This is a country that belongs to everybody. And people in governance, they are there. Only, you can call it, only in, they are needing and also they want for these people to continue. So it is not them in, in government to mm. dictate. Mm. It is for us. We are the people governed. Mm. Anyone who is governing us must listen to us. Mm. What, what are your concerns, Archbishop? My concerns? You know, we always, at least I always go back to the, the teaching of the church and our Lord who said, go out there and proclaim the message of God mm. and proclaim full goodness for everybody. Mm. Why? <laughs> then, there is something that I wanted to say, but it has escaped me. We, we talked very shortly about people we elect yeah. in government. Mm. They have a mandate, and that mandate must be made 
by the people, mm. even long before elections. Mm. If you give that to them when they are already in power, they, they don't need you. Mm. They, they, they have it. We have to say, right, this is what the way we go. Mm. And we begin with number one. I can see you are smiling. Mm. Number one thing is the constitution. Yeah. When you look at our constitution, we don't even know what is going on. There was a time when the president could be the president and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Number one, to have this constitution done and done well. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, people will be guided. You can't just wake up one day and you say, I'm so and so, I'm doing so and so. Mm -hmm. No. Here is the guide. And this guide must be followed. Mm. You don't follow this, you are a persona non grata. Mm. Actually, you can be indicted and be prosecuted. Mm. <laughs> when people come to understand that, things will be better. Mm. You, you were part of um, a grouping that created OSIDA as a civil society grouping to speak to governance issues um, we have seen pictures that you've had interactions with the president. Have you tabled your concerns to the president that uh, probably has veered off the course in which he was elected, that he could have abandoned the issues of the poor, and the, the, maybe he has allowed corruption to fester? No. What? Yeah, first of all, just a little correction. Yes, sir. I am just a humble member of OSIDA. Yes, sir. And that is the truth, the whole truth. And nothing, nothing but, but the, the truth. truth. <laughs> so help me, God. Help God. Help So I was uh, approached, approached by agents sent by OSIDA, mm -hmm. beginning with late Simon Zukas. Simon Zukas, yes. I was there enjoying my peace. And someone says, don't enjoy your peace too much. The work has not been done yet. Mm -hmm. Don't you come along. You come along and we, we work together. Mm -hmm. We will guide you. We have a big picture. Mm -hmm. We want Zambia to be big. Yeah. We will be party to it. Are you ready for that? I was shaking, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I finally agreed. When I finally agreed, the members that I found said, well, we can try you. We will try you in the, that when something has to be said, we are going to be swearing by you as the president of this. Really, you are going to do that? Mm -hmm. What about you? Don't you think there is this around? <laughs> well, if you, are, if you are afraid, tell us. <laughs> I failed to challenge. I said, you do the work. You guide me. I will be there mm. because I know it is, it is critical. Talking about meeting the president, you know very well what we did as a, a, a little group, you know, concerning what could have happened to uh, Edgar Lungu, for example. Yeah. Anyway, what we were thinking was, Look, let's see this man face to face mm -hmm. after the elections and he was put in place mm -hmm. as president. He renegated on mm -hmm. the premises, on, on the promises rather, that he had given them. You can, mm -hmm. you, you can ask him. He didn't even want to hear us anymore. anymore. Mm -hmm. And he made sure that he sabotaged that first meeting that we had said, we are going to speak out. Mm. What did he do? He brought in all kinds of, you know, spokes and so on and so forth. And we didn't pronounce it. But there were angels who are very smart. If we can't read it, we can distribute it mm. to the people who are in the mass media, in the media. And that's what happened. So he failed to do that. 
So each time. He, when you met the president and the concerns you had uh, brought to his attention, he didn't want them to be communicated to the country. Yeah, that's, that's correct. That's exactly mm. what happened. Mm. He didn't want that kind of thing. So, so why is he feeling that he should escape scrutiny? This is a president that has come on the back of civil society support, like Osida and others, is one that came on promoting you know, democracy and transparency, and he should be subjected to that scrutiny. Well, I agree with you. But what the situation is, this group that will be demanding accountability from him, they would just go there on the mercy mm. of H.H. Mm. He does not listen to people. One of the leaders in the UPND came and challenged me mm. and he said, ah, you know, you are writing, you are speaking, and whatever, whatever, why don't you call him? Yes. Call him and you can tell him what you want to tell him mm -hmm. instead of uh, the papers there and so on and so forth. I said, uh, to begin with, your man does not listen to anybody. I would be very, very surprised if he listens to you. Mm -hmm. He is a one-man dictator. Mm -hmm. Some of the dictators at least are in a group, but he listens to nobody. When we went to State House, after so many times of trying and trying and trying, mm -hmm. We arrived there, and then we were treated to a lecture. It, mm. was, it was a lecture. Coming out, someone asked me, how did the meeting go? Very nice. So you were Very invited nice. to a meeting, a meeting you've been pushing, because you've seen so many wrong things, and you've had an opportunity now to see the president and then deliver your, your views and probably hold a dialogue. Instead, it became a lecture. It was a lecture. He had all kinds of people that he sent to monitor what was going to be said. And then when we went there, everything was being said, and the answers were being given without our participation. That is it. That man does not listen. Recently, again, another young man came. Mm. But you know, you see, why don't you call him? To, I'm not going to call him to, to lecture me. Yeah. No, not at all. Mm. I want someone who is open to the Republic of Zambia and people who like to participate in, in the ruling of this country by bringing good ideas. We, we, we just went there. We, we felt like a group of fools. <laughs> really, really. So I, it, th this scares me. This scares. And like you are saying, then we are in full flight dictatorship. If you, Archbishop, you know, of Lusaka, twice, your position in the church, your voice in this country, you are at State House and you are treated like school children by a headmaster. Precisely. What about I, his cabinet ministers? What about his own appointees? Yeah. yeah, that's it. It is a dictatorship, pure and simple. And we cannot continue with this kind of thing. They, they, the country cannot progress. There are people in the UPND, you know, sometimes they use uh, very unfair words that uh, maybe you, you and others helped President Hagai H. Lema to become president but you have not harvested the fruits from his government and therefore you are now criticizing him. What do you say to those people saying that? I, I don't want to be rude. This is just trash. <laughs> if you ask the archangel there and saint there, that is exactly what our leaders did not want. Mm. And you think I was going around looking for a job. Not Myself, but this is an insert. It is an insert. It's exactly that. Some one or two of our members 
have run away precisely because they were not given that, that or some one of their their children, one of their friends. So we don't want when I arrived there, uh, you know, Sida, we are not looking for jobs. Jobs. We are people who are concerned about the state the, of our country. Yeah, the, the, our country. And so if you want a job, that is the door. I said, no. I was sacked because I resigned. So you think I'm going to look for another? <laughs> mm. Mm. No. No. Mm. So all those that are around him, some of them have been you know, taken from, from all job seekers. It, it would just hurt me. Yeah. If today I went and I said, I'm the president. I want to be prime minister. I'm sure he would give it to me because he would just completely kill everyone there on the other side. You know, he was. Um, Pundu said this. Pundu now he's the fellow. Who mm -hmm. We have to no. So we feel that that is not the right thing. And those who want jobs from Anankan, HH, they are free to go, but they are not standing for people's wishes. Um, the young people, I think, listened to your call and the calls of others to have um, the government of Edgar Lungu voted out and to bring in Haka Inde Ichilema. The hopes of Zambians literally lay, you know, um, on the shoulders of Ichilema that if he is elected, first of all, that he was going to do what he promised he would do. Yeah which he has, you know, lamentably failed. But secondly, that our country will be better. The divisions will be bridged and that the unity of our country will be forged better. What are the lessons we are learning from the 2021 elections? Were we harsh on Edgar Lungu? Did we bequeath these good political fortunes to each Lima, maybe without proper scrutiny? What can we learn from the 2021 elections? Yeah, when we go for campaigning for the next elections, it is still far, but not too far, is to simply first and foremost, I went to this uh, interview with the people in the media who are knowledgeable. They, are, they have said, we have just to look at what Zambia is from the point of view of governance. Mm. And we come up with a very clear, clear statement. We don't want dictators. We want people who are listening to, the leaders listening to people. Mm. And not just a few people. Structures that are there that must coerce the mm. president to do the right thing. Mm. Because, as I said, dictatorship coming from Kenneth Kaunda, people think that they are, they are, they are, they are gods when they are in there. Mm. And HH is also number one about that. He does not bend. He does not listen. And sometimes those who have within, how do you call it, much more learning than me in, 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 in areas of, uh, we are talking about the economy, and so on and so forth. They say this person knows absolutely nothing about the economy. Why doesn't he rely on experts? experts. And we have them, and they are good. Mm. But it's things that he knows more than anybody else. So where are we going to a precipice? But we are not going to allow it. Mm. Mm. We are going to, again, start a campaign, like the one that we started with, Edgar Lungu. Mm -hmm. We started it at a Kariba Tam there. And it was like this, going on and on and on. We have to do it. And we are going to do it on behalf of our dear country. Why do you think that President Ichilema is a danger to our country, that we have to start a campaign against him and probably seek possible solution and possible uh, successor to him? Yeah. All dictators are beasts. They kill. Anyone who doesn't listen, they go. But not only that. What 
we are supposed to be doing is learning, learning in our own groups. There should be a few more groups coming up, not just OSIDA. Mm -hmm. Learning how to work together and how to listen to one another. Mm -hmm. Without that, we will forever continue going back to dictatorship. Mm -hmm. And dictatorship, for, for us, uh, you and me, we are Christian and so on and so forth. Let's make it very clear. Mm. But HH, you are there to look after God's people. They are not your people. You fail to do this. We are going to make sure that you go out. This is not your little garden. It is God's own river, as we call it, vineyard. Listen to the people. Listen to the people, and again, listen to the people. And you have people who are wonderful, most of them educated like you, and so they don't listen to them. This is an insight to Zambia. Mm -hmm. Our togetherness in terms of education is quite good. Mm -hmm. But it is not, not, not utilized. What does he do after meeting, you know? In, he goes back to state house. And what does he do? <laughs> That's where I, I met so and so. This is what he said. Let me th think about it. Let me pray about it. So you know, for us, the watchers and yeah. people in the country, when we saw a good picture of you and the president, we said, "How can she never land? You can she? You know, things are going very well. The president has just seen Osida, but you've revealed here that." Um, it was a lecture. Yeah. I suspect then those meetings are used for propaganda purposes. Sure. They are not used to sure. build this country. Sure. Because when we see the pictures, and there is no information, they just say the president met or sit down, met the church, or met the trade unions. But if what you have described is a window of those meetings, they are being used for PR or propaganda purposes, not to achieve national building. Right, right, right. When we came personally, I'm quiet. and I think the Archangel sent as well. When we came from there, I went for a cold shower. <laughs> Just to cool, cool down cool. the anger. This man is taking God's people for granted. This man should not be allowed to go more than one term, if at all. We should begin now. We are tired. The people of Zambia From that tight. meeting, you made that final decision about him. For me, I, for, yeah, you are right. This is not the person we thought would be uh, our touch bearer as a leader. This is a, a monster. He is a monster. And when it comes to corruption, he is a master of it. Uh, those who come to ask me, the young journalists, what do you think about uh, this person? I said, look, uh, I take uh, strength, you know, from the American Constitution, which was, uh, I say, drafted by uh, Thomas Jefferson. Eh? Thomas Jefferson said, we are about to make this Constitution. You see, these are the guidelines that will help us, you know. What are the guidelines? And you see, there are two dangers to the people of the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Two dangers. And which are these dangers? One is the state itself. <laughs> <laughs> the state itself mm -hmm. is a danger to the people. So, our constitution should be in such a way that it will bind this state so that it doesn't do what it wants. And against the citizens. People. Yeah, and the citizens. But then the second one, it is the crooks. Mm. The crooks I come to. together mm. with the state. the state to really abandon, to brutalize the people. And that is it. It is still true. So I told them, very, there were two of them in my office. 
what, that's what we have now in Zambia. You can't say anything to the president. You say, but you elected me. Mm -hmm. You elected me. Mm -hmm. I am the right person. Mm -hmm. You can't say, well, no, why don't you meet so, so and such, such people which you have? No, 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 no. You elected me. So what we have is a wonderful combination of crooks and criminals. And that is a fact. Then they are just sucking this country. Pillaging the... the so, someone yesterday on social media yeah. used um, a very strong term and um, because you've called Ichle my master of corruption. Someone said community house is the biggest crime scene and with your with your description that the state has become harmful and it has bound together with crooks and therefore it is very harmful for our people. No, so that is a, that, I don't know how it came. I was just so angry. How mm -hmm. can I find out some description of this person? He is representing the state yeah. and bringing all crooks and criminals. I mean, some of them very, very, very childish. Mm -hmm. uh, in the previous government, some of the people were imprisoned without cause. We are going to give them money to compensate them. Mm -hmm. they, they just created something and they started paying themselves. Not we, Zambians, we were just there looking, not one voice that said, but he's criminal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. no, no, the compensations raised a lot of concerns. One batch has gotten up to 32 million. And in most cases, what has, I think, um, concerned all of us is that these matters didn't go through the process of the, of the court. They were consent judgments. So meaning the facts haven't even been interrogated by court. The attorney general who has been sued with the, the so-called victims just come together and write an agreement and they deposit this agreement in court and then the payouts come. Literally, there's no better example than a looting frenzy there. The state coming together with the crooks, with the capital C, <laughs> crooks, <laughs> international, looting people. Mm -hmm. Now there is hunger going on. Our people are... And then this person does not even see that this is wrong. So that is the... I, I am saying that... that is the a man of your influence, you met President Nakainde Chilema in opposition several times. You officiated at their functions. Have, haven't you found people around him who could influence his path by raising these concerns to, to, to him, other than the failure that you had an opportunity to tell him, but he gave you people a lecture? Haven't you attempted to dissuade him from this ruinous path by speaking to people around him? So, yesterday, and the day before yesterday, and there is plenty of food here and there, so he doesn't know where to eat first, <laughs> and so on and so forth. <laughs> so, I think, I wish we could find someone like that, but mm. there is no one like that. Mm. No one like that. So, what, what is the way forward for our country, Archbishop? You people, you are gurus. You can ask us, and, Angel Kulia, we are going to report to you, to them from you. We would like more ideas. If it were possible, well, it is not possible because we don't have that in the Constitution where one day the National Assembly would just come up and say, away with this president. We don't have it, so we just have to suffer. Would you agree to those people calling for fresh elections? Do you think that the extent of the damage President Nakainde Ichilema is doing to the state and to our country is so much that we should call for early elections. We give an example of um, Dr. Kenneth David Kaunda. He has just been elected in 1988 with a massive landslide of up to 94%. But within a year, people are calling for early elections. And um, we had a good man in Dr. Kaunda who obliged and conceded and subjected him to himself to fresh elections. 
I see the UPND and President Rakainde Ichilema already saying he has a five-year mandate. You are judging him too early. The mistakes he has made or the failure to correct the economy will be corrected by the time his mandate is coming to an end. What do you say to those sentiments? Call for early elections yeah. and that Ichilema was elected for five years and he needs to be given five years. To me, I don't know. Maybe I'm very harsh for President Kawunda. President Kawunda is not the person that people want to, to paint. He was brutal. Mm -hmm. People disappeared. People yeah. were killed. And then when it came to dictatorship, there was no way you could say something to him that he didn't like and that you would really leave one week after that. Mm -hmm. You would be gone. You would be gone. What if we had that kind of thing in the parliament that says such and such a president performs so badly that you cannot bear to see him or her, it will help us. But it isn't. Only with the exception of a rebellion. For example, if we had the members of parliament angry enough to eat a a goat and uh, to eat a uh, whatever, whatever. This is not, this is enough. This is enough. We're using the impeachment clause. Yeah, impeachment clause, who is going to, to sign it? Who is going to go sign it? Mm. If it is there, why not tell these people, wonderful people, you are MPs, this is enough. Bring the impeachment clause. We don't want this person to continue. He doesn't represent anybody, mm. not even humanity. That would be wonderful. <laughs> Archbishop, these are very, very powerful words. I remember in the Constitution, uh, Your Grace, in the making of the Constitution, yes. there was that clause that was dropped, the power of recall. Yeah. Because our people are complaining that the MPs you elect and they disappear for five years. They just come during the re-election and come with a bag of money again, get re-elected. And then you have president, presidents that go wrong where midway you can see that they are not saving interest and that there should be a power of recall other than the impeachment. But of course that clause never came to pass. But I've just been reminded when you are saying if there was a way of yeah. uh, yeah. recalling a president you yeah. I think my guardian angel is descending. We, we should uh, propagate for such an article in the Constitution so that people cannot come up and trample like elephants on people mm. and then thinking that they will go away unscathed. Mm. That law should be very... There was a time when you, the Parliament was even given power to elect their president, mm. but mm. they didn't mm. use it. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't. That's where we are saying some of us, you know, we, we hope they use that power not to get the, the man out of mm, mm, No. Mm. Our constitution should be made to breathe yeah. and to have teeth to bite. Mm. You do this, you do that, you do that. Off you go. Yeah. No, we have an impeachment clause, yeah, you know, but the trouble is partisan feelings. We never rise to national. Uh, uh, interest because national interest would dictate that even if you are UPND and you think that the president is on a detrimental path, you can support an impeachment motion. Yeah, but uh, see, to me, it is just the you can say the foundation behind those people, the KKs of this world, mm. good people for sure. But they were dictators. They didn't want anyone to go beyond them, beyond what they say. So it was not possible to bring a vote against Kenneth Kaunda. Mm -hmm. It was impossible. Yeah, yeah. And he came out, you know, with a nice smile and a little joke there and so on and so forth. But down, 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 he was not a Democrat at all. Yes. Over the years, I'm, I'm glad that uh, you've brought the perspective of Dr. Kaunda because over the years, we have um, brain, brought a saint picture of Dr. Kaunda. We have forgotten the brutality of the one-party state. 
where there were these deep concerns and we've never healed. There are these concerns that every government and every leader leaves. Do you see that this country can have um, some form of truth and reconciliation commission where our people pour their concerns, especially against the state and against certain state leaders, so that we heal as a nation and maybe uh, other than just the usual ele elections, there should be a way of this country healing. Um, I wish we had this institution that simply say, you will present get lost, but we don't have it. <laughs> we don't have it. Probably, if uh, a movement is, is started, mm -hmm. a suggestion, for example, from the media houses, where we have heard from other countries and other uh, democratic uh, dispensations, mm -hmm. that it is possible to throw out your president if he is uh, very naughty. Mm -hmm. then people are going to be on the same wavelength yeah. and on the same bandwagon. I tell you, I would jump at it myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Your Grace, the, the <laughs> church yes. is being accused of being silent in the face of this dictatorship, in the face of this hunger and pain that our country is facing in the face of the injustice that we are seeing. And the church, which is literally the moral and sort of the earth, is extremely silent. We saw a pastoral letter from your church. We recognize you in retirement. A very strong pastoral letter that was issued at the end of October. But that was literally the first one in a period of two years. And again, as things evolve, we've seen silence. In your times, especially when you're Archbishop of uh, Lusaka from 2004, I think, to 2008 and, you know, 20, again, 2017, 2018, you led the church in a very vocal way. And when I say the church, I also mean other, other yes, denominations. Yes, yes, yes. There seems to be a conspiracy of silence. Yes, you are right. You are right. You are right indeed. Um, yeah, I just forget one idea you said before. I was yes, having another idea. Oh. Literally the role of the church oh, yeah, the, the role, in, in, in this matter where we are in the yeah. face of hunger for our people, high cost of living, yeah. and the church is silent. Okay. Um, I am now going to make a confession. Are you ready to absorb my sins? No, I'm not ready to receive your confession, <laughs> your grace, but no, I'll listen. No, no. <laughs> um, you credit me with, you know, coming up strongly and so on and so forth. It was not my intention to do so. It's because the conference of bishops, with their background and their history, of people and bishops who are so vocal as well as vocal. In the end, I became a lone star. Each time I made a statement, I wrote something under just that kind of umbrella that we are there as bishops to be guidance to especially the political establishment I was getting a lot of shower, I say. The bishops themselves, you know, accusing me of railroading them, and I don't, you know, I was not consulting them on this and all that. So one day I got very angry, and I said, my fellow bishops, here is my resignation. I was voted five times to be president of this conference. Mm -hmm. I didn't put myself there. You cast that vote for me. And I think it was a very good show of confidence you had in me. But now, every time there is a little statement I have to make, I have to run to all the bishops. That means I, I don't think much, I don't have much there, up there. Each time I have to go, write to all of them to hear from some of the statements need immediate contradiction. Mm. 
No. So in the end, I just withdrew slowly. And I said, I'm going it alone. And when Alkenjo uh, Brebner came and said, there is a little picnic here, would you like to come along? I was jumping like, you know, you are right. The leadership of the church, Catholic church, is, we can say, compromise. I don't know why. They, what are they afraid of? I don't know. They are compromised, and it is not right. I think perhaps I should again start <laughs> you know, being pe like pins. You know. Look, I said it time and again. Time has come for us to act and to come up with a strong statement, very, very uh, clearly done, because time has come now. I was again, at a certain time, during the British colonial administration, mm. how this, most of them, expatriate. In fact, more, all of them, expatriates, stood for us Africans, and they won. Mm. And each time they spoke, the British colonial administration, they obeyed. But yeah, why? The, the church led by white uh, or European priests spoke for, for you know, where with the anti-colonial grouping, spoke for against colonialism, literally speaking against their bosses. Yes. But you see, not long ago, we had Bishop Duffy yes. from the Western oh, province Duffy. there. Yeah. Uh, how powerfully outspoken he was. Yeah. They used to call him the Lion of Bu Bu Bulanikan. Bulos. Yeah, Bulos. He spoke. I was very surprised that at his burial, there were so many people from... The, the, the bishops themselves are from different places where you couldn't expect them to come, but they came for his burial because they saw how this man was a gallant soldier to protect his people, to, pro to be a first and first thing, and then to protest against things that were going on which were not, not, not really should not, should not be allowed to. So I think what ought to be done. In fact, twice mm -hmm. I spoke to them, even the last time they came. Look, this is the way we should go. If we don't go this way, we are going to lose it all together. And as my humble contribution, I'm saying, why don't we revive the, uh, how did we call this? You know, the, that group of, uh, uh, Church mother bodies. Yes, uh, the church mother bodies. Yes, yeah, yeah, but the group we have. Oasis Forum. Oasis Forum. Because yes. you brought civil society groupings, including yes. the Law Association of Zambia. See, let us revise this. We bring it together. Because all church mother bodies were part of it. And I remember one time we spent about two, is it three hours at the uh, Anglican uh, Cathedral. We were discussing something near Easter. Mm. And then I read that statement at the end. And my fellow bishops said, who told you to write that? I said, God told me to write, look, look at this. And so, mm. so that is also one of those areas. Mm. And even the other day I was talking about this church, Mother Bodies, mm. and uh, the thing that we had together. Mm. So, you know, those are good, 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 good suggestions. I think we should go along with him and don't relent. Mm. Don't relent. Mm. Come after us. Mm. And men, not just like this, you name the names. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> name and shame. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that empowerment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Why is it? Our, our people, the Catholics, they are speaking, but very quiet. Mm. No, no, you shouldn't be quiet. We belong to a church of our Redeemer, who is a powerful king. And now we are just like that, like little sheep. No, 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 it doesn't go. It doesn't yeah. go. Yeah. No, we need your voice. You know, in times, like I said, uh, in times at the highest of the dictatorship of Dr. Kaunda, it was a church. Yeah. The, uh, Kaunda didn't like the publications you do. 
but there was nothing he could do because the church was together despite the intimidations and threats. Uh, your grace, I've held you for a long time and I'm so privileged that you came to have a conversation with us. What are your last thoughts? Considering my death. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, we canonize you. We we'll go for your canonization. <laughs> <laughs> no, to personally, I just love my country. It pains me that sometimes we don't realize that our country is a good country. And our people are mostly good people. We haven't had uh, that kind of thing in Rwanda and Rwanda. Or the kind of uh, uh, tensions that you get in Zimbabwe and so on and so forth. We, we are good people, but yeah. let us encourage people who can speak to speak. Mm. They shouldn't wait until things are so bad. Part of it, like we are here, I think he's taking notes. We mm. should go back to those notes and say, we have to make this statement. Well, I don't see how bishops can be afraid of anybody. Mm. I wasn't afraid of anybody. Even now, I'm not afraid of anybody. If I know what is to be said, must be said. That gives me a lot of power. And this is the way it is supposed to be. You people, don't be afraid. Tell us, mm. where are you? In your, you know, you say, sacristies, you know, we want to hear words that are good from your mouth, guidance. Mm. Mm. It took a long time for them to come up with a very, very poor kind of statement. Mm. I was saying, my God, mm. I look like my trousers are falling down. You didn't hear that? You didn't hear that? So every time you spoke, you know, you, you, you shake the country from the days you know, you were in, in, in active ministry. And um, you say the unsaid. You say uncomfortable truths. You speak truth to power. You say things that many are afraid to say. But you say it as it is. And I think over the years, and I think that's why I bothered to work with you from the time you were ordained and your activities and, you know, your, your work in Christ and in mission up to date. So people realize that when you speak harshly against Edgar Lungu, because you've spoken harshly against Michael Sata, you've spoken harshly against Rupia Banda, you've spoken harshly against uh, uh, Frederick Chilwa, you've spoken harshly against Kaunda, and you've spoken harshly against President Akainde Ichilema, you speak as it is, you speak your concerns as you see them. And I think the duty of leaders is not for us to insult you or demean you. The leaders should listen to you. They should listen to your concerns. And they should not worry about your choice of words because <laughs> your choice of words are very stinging. Well, when they receive that bee sting, they should remove it and understand why they've been stung than worry about the, the sting. Um, uh, Archbishop Telesfo Mpundu, I'm so grateful, sir that you made an appearance on the Conversation podcast. Dr. that rich member, I wanted you to infuse it in the discussion, but maybe that's a, yeah, a matter yeah, yeah. for another day. <laughs> and, 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 and on that, I expected the UPND and President Daka in the to apologize when they called at Bishop Palik Banda those names. Lucifer. To date, there is no apology from President Daka Inde Ichilema or his Secretary General. Yeah. Uh, I wish we had time. We could have also discussed that particular matter. Because how do you handle such insults? You were Archbishop. When they attack you, they say you are partisan. They say no, join politics. How do you handle that? No. This is the best thing. Uh, when people say something and it is not true or it is something that is not worthy mm. of people of standards you know, where they are, we just denounce that. Mm. It's a pity I'm 
uh, referring to one who, who died recently, the person who was the commander of the army, the, no, not the army, the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And that one time he was a big man in uh, Honorable Ron Shkapasha. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Ron Shkapasha came up with a stinging attack on the Catholic Church. That when you were Archbishop of Lusaka at the time. Yes. And you're president of the Episcopal Conference. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That, you know, the, the Catholic Church is uh, brewing uh, racism and then like in Rwanda that's what they want to do and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. it was a How long. did you respond to that? Ooh, I put my AK-47 in that barrel. Um, <laughs> we didn't hear of him anymore. Yeah, because I remember then at the time, Honorable, Honorable Ron Shikapasha was chief government spokesperson. Yes, he yes. was minister of information. So I sp spoke about that and ravished it. And then, as a, a, in the end, as pastor, as pastor in a, in a church, the one who is saying things like that instead of encouraging one another mm. about what happened in Rwanda, and then went on and on and on. That was the end of him. Mm. Because it was so low. Mm. You don't mm. do things like that at that stage in leadership. Mm. Even if he was in the, I mean, in the Air Force, he's part of government. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. That, that is it. The honor and privilege there, yeah, they are mine. Sometimes I am learning inside where do I speak about this, you know. For, but you know, you give me your time, and I say, well, this is where I'm supposed to be. And you are very knowledgeable about you know, issues of the church that you should <laughs> go out and the proclamation of the, the gospel, the evangelization, mm. those words are very technical, but you know them. Mm. 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 We will give you a mark. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. To our dear listeners and viewers, we're privileged today to host Archbishop Telesfo Mpundu. Archbishop Emeritus is in retirement, but you can see he has not retired <laughs> from the wisdom that I think he has gathered and given to the nation. Uh, we will continue with the conversation is to build our country, to unite our country, yeah. and voices like Archbishop Teles from Pundu just come to, you know, render that voice to the project that this country must have conversations, even the difficult conversations. Especially yeah. the difficult ones, because mm -hmm. these ones, you know, the difficult ones where we know the stakes are high. And yeah. once we have one, we have a grant. But yeah. the little things, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. The big things, so that we can, we, think we won. Yeah. We have yeah. made progress as a country. Yeah. Yeah. Especially those. No, your passion for our country, your sacrifices you've made for our country, especially the courage you've demonstrated again and again against power. Because the presidents and the state are very, very powerful. But you've risen again and again mm, and yeah. spoken very strongly, Karabesa. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 <laughs> You have my applause. You have my applause. <laughs> Clearly, that deep member from Kasama, where you go. Thank you very much. Archbishop, this is your platform. You, I may invite you once again. Maybe there could be a burning issue yeah, yeah. where you can render guidance, national guidance, and I'll be privileged to invite you. I'm coming to come and jog with you. You are very fit. and <laughs> <laughs> I'll come to Thorn Park and jog with you. Put you on camera. Thank you. So thank you for coming. And thank you, special thanks go to your guardian angel, Mr. Brebna Changala, yes, who yes. I've been bothering that, please get me the Archbishop. And today he told me the good news that you'll be here. So thanks to Brebna Changala as well for, for, for the great work he has done to ensure that he could fish out the Archbishop from you know, his place of safety to come to the conversation. So God bless you and see you next time. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. God bless you all. Oh.
thank you. But thank especially you. you. You are an archangel, not just the angel. There. Yes. Archangel. <laughs> Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.